Welcome to our service this afternoon. I invite you to get your hymnals and turn over to hymn 366. We'll sing the first, second, last stanza. I am resolved. 366. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. I will hasten to Him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to Thee. I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. Just one, he had the words of life. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved, and who will go with me? Come, friends, without delay. Taught by the Bible and by the Spirit, we'll walk the heavenly way. I will hasten to Him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to Thee. Start over to Hymn 280. 280. Heavenly Sunlight. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep vale. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. Shadows around me, shadows above me, never conceal my Savior and guide. He is the light, in Him is the darkness, ever I'm walking close to His side. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. In the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above, singing His praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. Walking in the light of Christ. No better light to walk in. Amen. Welcome to our service here this afternoon at Cornerstone Baptist Church. And I pray that you've enjoyed your afternoon. And some of you may have gotten uh, 20 winks. And some of you may wish you had have gotten 20 winks. <laughs> but uh, we're here to serve the Lord and uh, be filled with uh, His Word. Uh, let's see. Announcements. Uh, as I mentioned this morning, we really didn't have any other than camp report, and we're, we're fixing to break the 50s, right? Well, how many, is there, how many are left? Are left? 62. Yeah, so I said we're about ready to break the 50s, right? Yeah, yeah okay. All right. I have an announcement. Yes. Yes, I am. I have to go for five transfusions of blood pipes. You have to go for five transfusions? Five Okay, and when does that start? Whenever the referral goes, I go through. Okay. I hope it's soon because I'm tired. All right. Let's remember this. 
And also continue to remember Sister Diane's husband, Ed. He's still waiting for his referral. Yeah, and we're both waiting on that every school. Okay. And, and his sister. Okay. We right. want to go see her, but we got to make sure that we're okay. Understood. So keep the family in your prayers. Anyone else this afternoon? Yes, Debbie? I have a couple um, asking for prayers for my boy's grandmother. She's in liver failure from diabetes, and she's up there in age. She's in hospice right now. And a friend of mine, Liz, has stage 4 cancer, colon cancer. Um, continued prayers for my friend Mel. Um, hopefully she's going to get the colostomy bag off in June. Hopefully she's healed enough to do that and it's successful. And I'm also thankful that I figured out what's wrong with my car. <laughs> the dual controls. Oh. <laughs> that side was on hot. My side was on air. Did Maria tell you that? It, there, there, there is a button called sync. Yeah, that that's, was, that's what was happening. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad I figured it out before I took it in. <laughs> okay. This thing isn't working. Yeah. It's always great when God gives us wisdom on things, right? Figure things out. Also, my friend Ronnie is getting um, two stints in on tomorrow. Okay. So. Remember all of these. Anyone else this afternoon? Keep our, uh, you know, when you have a building, things break at times, and uh, today is no different. So our air conditioner on this side is broken. That's why it's warm in here. The other side's cold. Is there dual controls? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was that easy. So, uh, you know, just give us, pray for wisdom that we can figure out what it is, and it's not costly. So, uh I always praise God when we get enough minds together that uh, can figure out things, and if it's just a part, we replace the part, and we're done. But uh, as Brother John and I found out yesterday, sometimes uh, the best laid plans are not always the straightforward ones, and you have to think through things until you arrive at the right answer. But that's what God's wisdom and uh, grace gives us, is to be able to work through these things. All right, anyone else? Uh, prayer requests, prayers of thanksgiving. Do you like to share this after? Yes, Sister Ali. I that uh, my granddaughter who has the stiff neck, she's doing good now. Okay. And she's doing a nice, my grandson who has, I didn't mention that because I, I, I learned a lot and everything. He had the tetanus okay. vaccine and he's some kind of allergic, so his, his uh, arm was very swollen and red and got tender or the antibiotics have been working with. Okay. Great to hear that. That he's doing better. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. I just thought of this. This is a, sort of like a matter of prayer. Simone is going to go get, I think, one year shots. Uh, I don't remember there being four shots at one time. But that's what they have, that's the way they're doing them now or something. And um, I told Sarah to just call and ask. It's the parents' desire that she does not get all four at one time. Mm -hmm. They said something at the doctor when she got the last one. Was like, no, 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 can't get. I mean, because we just can't keep up and you know lose track. And I said, that's a sorry excuse. Yeah, that's some bad record keeping. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> if you can't keep up, just write it down. Give it to me. I'll write it down. <laughs> but um, my kids, and they went to the health department. I did when I was a kid. You had a health card. Everything you got, they wrote it in their heart. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to get all four because they said, "Oh, and you will have to watch out for the fever with this one." I said, oh. "You know what? She had them before when she didn't have four, and you come over there when her fever is 102 and close to 103. You come over." All right. Remember this. And what else? I praise God that he can work through all of these things that we have in our lives and uh, irrespective of how dire things are, he's always there to, to walk with us. And um, that's what we're just saying, walking in sunlight, his light. And through it all, we can still praise him. We can rejoice because we know he is in control. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time and we'll um, uh, just ask the Lord's guidance in each of these matter. Uh, Brother John, would you lead us in our prayer? Dear Lord, I thank you for this time that we gather together again this afternoon. Thank you, Lord, for this 
place that you've given us. Lord, I pray for each of these prayer requests. You've heard them all, Lord, from each one. I pray that you would uh, uh, have your way with each one and uh, that you would shower each one with your loving kindness. Uh, pray especially for all those that dealt with sickness and uh, for Lord, all the situations, the difficult situations, we pray for all those people. And I pray, Lord, that you would take care of each situation. Uh, pray that you would uh, also Bless Brother Ron as he stands before us, opens your word, and guide and lead him, please. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's go to him 397. 397. The song is titled Without Him. 397. Without Him I could do nothing Without Him I surely fail Without Him I would be drifting Like a ship without a sail Jesus Turn him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Without him, how lost I would be. Without him, I would be dying. Without him, I'd be enslaved. Jesus, thank God I'm saved. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? You can turn him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, without him alone. Right across the page, 396, first, second, last stanza. He keeps me singing. We'll stand on the last stanza and receive our evening offering. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace be still. In all of life's ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife, discord filled my heart with pain. Jesus swept across some broken strings. Stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Let us stand last. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Brother David, would you come and receive our And would you pray? Amen. 
Lord, we thank you uh, for this uh, wonderful afternoon. We uh, can uh, continue to uh, fellowship and uh, worship your name. And thank you, Lord, for uh, the continue the provision and the uh, uh, guidance that you have given to us every day and even for this time, Lord. And we thank you for this uh, uh, offering that we can uh, give back to you, Lord, to continue to pray, Lord, that I can this. Uh, as Lord, as we get to seek your will and uh, serve you in the uh, way that you wanted us to uh, be used for your uh, glory, Lord, and we trust you for the things that you say. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Good morning, Cornerstone. I said it again. It's always in the afternoon. I always say good morning. Good afternoon, Cornerstone. I hope you're enjoying today. I'm very thankful, even though the air conditioner's not working, that it's not burning hot. That would be miserable. But you know what? I was thinking about it. Wasn't that long ago there was no such thing as air conditioning. So, well, I, I, I know I know when I was young, I remember there was no air conditioning house. Only the rich people had it, you know, and there was only very few of those where I'm where I was from. Let's turn to Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter chapter three, and we're gonna look at verses eight through twelve. Second Peter three, verse eight through twelve. Let's read these scripture verses and then we'll go to the Lord in prayer. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also in the works of that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting to unto the coming of the day of the Lord, the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with the fervent heat. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this another wonderful day. I thank you, Lord, for another opportunity that I'm able to stand and to proclaim your word. I ask, Lord, that you be with each and every one of us. And I ask, Lord, that you be with each and one of the prayer requests mentioned today, those both spoken and unspoken. I know, Lord, on the hearts of each and every one of us is someone who we are praying for that you continue to convict the hearts of those we are praying for and help them to come to the knowledge of your salvation. And your salvation is so good, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you uh, continue to watch over this church each and every day. Help us to make the correct decisions that are God-honoring and help us to be the servants that you want us to be. And it's all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Here Peter writes, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. 
in verse number 8. I don't think I read verse 8 before, did I? Sorry. No. That's why I was so lost. Yeah. So I'm very sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not that hot. The heat shouldn't be getting to me. Um, verse 8 through 12. Uh, the reason I did that is because in my Bible I have Mark highlighted verse 9. And so I said verse 9, but in my paperwork it starts off with verse number 8. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. I have titled this sermon this evening, Standing on the Promises. Know this, whether you're atheist or not, God's going to return one day, and if you're atheist, I'm sorry, you've been forewarned. God said he's going to come back. God is going to come back. And what he said he's going to do, it's going to happen. In Psalms 90 and verse 1, this song here it says it was a prayer of Moses, the man of God. In this song, he says, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. In verse 4 of Psalms chapter 90, it says, For a thousand years in the sight are in thy sight are as but yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. My heart breaks, it really does, for people that just refuse to get it they can't you know everybody can get it did you know everybody can come to the knowledge of salvation but it's but their sin nature that ref, that 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 is like the message this morning there is a convicting part of our human nature that is in controversy with our spirit nature even paul said there's a constant battle all the time there's always this constant division. But you know what? The Lord is greater than our sin. And the Lord can sustain you. And the Lord can win every battle. But you've got to put it in His hands to do that. You have to put your faith and trust in Jesus. We live every day thinking about what the next day is going to hold and we're planning for things in the future, future because you and I are on a timeline. You and I are looking for what we can gather in life for tomorrow. You know what? People need to get this and understand tomorrow may never come. God is not in a time frame. You and I live in a time frame. God is not in a time frame. A thousand years is as one day to God. That don't mean it one day is a thousand years. It says as, which means time to God is nothing. Which means our puny little 90 years that we're going to live is nothing in comparison with where we will be with God in all eternity. God promised that he was going to return. And all those that are dead in Christ are going to rise and meet him in the air. And when he returns, those that are alive and remain will be caught up with him. We need to continue to stand on the promises of God. If God said it, you can stand on it and you can bet your life on it. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as verse 9 tells us. In Habakkuk 2 and verse 2, in this verse, uh, verse 2 and 3, it says, The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. In other words, he's predicting this is going to happen. But the end, at the end, it shall speak and lie not, which means you can pretty much bet the Lord said this is going to happen. It's going to happen. In the garden, God told Satan, this is going to happen. And some thousands of years later, Jesus came, born of a virgin, and came and he was the sinless son of God and gave his life to cover our sin. 
It's going to happen. Here in Habakkuk, verse number three, it says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. God promises are always true. In Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 14, it says, God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. On thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all of the days of thy life. You ever seen a snake with feet? Cursed because of what Satan did. Today they are still crawling upon their bellies. Verse 15 of the text that I just read to you. He told Satan, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The heel of Jesus was bruised when he was died on a cross, when he was nailed on a cross for our sin. But Satan was crushed. His head was crushed. God told him it was going to happen, and it happened. In verse number 16 of that text, it says, And the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. You ever been into a maternity room in a hospital where women are giving birth? There are screams in every room. It says, In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. What's happening in the world today is God's way is being pushed aside for what man thinks is a better way. I call it, don't get, don't get mad at me, I call it liberalism. Where I'm not saying the man is better than the woman, but God made a design. We need to stick to that design. When the woman starts being the head over the man, you've messed up God's design. Doesn't mean she's, she, he's better or she's better, they are both equal, but it's God's design. In verse 17 of Genesis, it says unto Adam, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree. That means sometimes we shouldn't listen to our wives. The women are looking at me like, what's he going to say next? <laughs> no, this is talking about when... You're being told something that is not true, and you hearken unto that. That don't mean your wives are always wrong. I mean, you shouldn't listen to your wives. That means when something is told you that it's not a truth. Well, here he says, you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife, meaning you've done something that I told you not to do, but you listened to her and you did it anyway. He said, cursed. Oh, wait a minute. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. How many gardens grow without thorns in it? How many gardens grow that have thorns and people have to put, put some type of uh, chemical on it or fertilizer or something on it to kill the weeds? Cursed is the ground. Every time I went out into a, into a garden to do any work in the garden, I sweated. Anytime I had to do any work outside, it was by the sweat of my face to get rid of those thorns so that the garden would grow. Of course, it's been many, many years since I've been in a garden, but that's what you got to do. And it's still today, cursed is the ground. The ground is still cursed for man. God said it was going to be cursed. It was cursed. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt... Eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it thou wast taken, for dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. There were some Hebrew children that were cast into a fiery furnace. But God delivered them because of God's promises. There was a man thrown into Daniel. He was thrown into a lion's den. But the lions did nothing to him because of God's promises to him. God makes all kinds of promises in the Old Testament. Second Chronicles 7 14, it says, If my people, which are called by my name, 
I'm here to tell you, if you're a saved child of God, you are called by the name of Jesus. He has covered you by his blood. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, that means we need to for forsake ourselves. We need to move ourselves out of the way and we need to look at God and stand on the promises of God. My promises may fail. God's promises will never fail. We need to turn from our wicked ways as he says they should in the Old Testament. And he says when, we, when they do that, when we do that, he says, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. God's promises is that He will save every individual that will come to Him. Stand on those promises. God makes promises, but in this verse, in our text, it says, some men make promises, but some men are, are counted as slackness. Some men are very slackful in their life. You and I, how many, how many of us have ever did everything without slacking? You ever do anything without slacking? <laughs> Only me? I'm just kidding. As some men count slackness, but it says here that he is long-suffering. You know what long-suffering is? You know what? All of our lives should have been taken a long time ago. You and I don't deserve life. You and I don't deserve everlasting life in heaven. You and I deserve hell, but he's long-suffering. That's his love for us. God loves us so much, He promised that He would be long-suffering. You know, there's going to come a time when God's, God's not going to accept anything else. He's going to, he's, your, your conviction's going to stop at some point because you will never accept Jesus. But when that point stops, you know what? You had your chance. You'll burn in hell. The rich man lifted up his voice and says, I am in torment. But God is long-suffering to us, word. He is not willing that any should perish. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4, it says, Who will have all men to be saved? God wants us all to be saved. And He wants us all to come to the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth only comes from the promises of the Word of God. Verse 5, 2 Timothy 2 says, There is one God. There's not many. There's no Buddhas. There's no Allahs. There's no Dagons. There's no Baals. There's one God. And there's one mediator. The mediator being Jesus Christ. The only way to get to God is through Jesus Christ. There is one God. There is one mediator between God and man. That's the Christ, man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all. And I want you to pay attention as I'm reading this. You're going to hear that word all several times in these verses. He gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. And he was not willing that any should perish. John 3.17 says, For the God sent not his Son of the world to condemn the world. He didn't need to. We were already condemned. He sent His Son of the world for salvation purposes that we could be saved. The con condemnation was already there. We don't need to be condemned anymore. We're already condemned. Jesus came that the world through Him might be saved. The world means all the world. And that all should come to repentance. John 1 and 1 says that John came and he said he came to bear witness of the light. Bear witness of the light. Light being Jesus. Jesus is the light of men. And that all men through him might believe all men. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Not just some. God is drawing everyone. God is drawing all. But there are people that are blocking him out. Acts 17.30, it says, In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men, all of us, atheist, murderer, adulterer, He's calling all to repentance. Every man, everywhere, 
to repent. Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore as by one man sin in the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men. We're all in the same boat as a sinner needing a Savior. For all have sinned. Romans 5.18, Therefore by, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. There's all again, all men. Me, Brother John, Brother Hal, all men. Brother David, all, everyone in this room, all men. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Titus 2.1 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Did you know all men will be convicted by the Spirit of God of their need for salvation? But all men are not going to accept. Right. Hell had to be enlarged. It had to be enlarged to take the people that, were, that will be put there that weren't designed for there. What people don't understand is verse number 10 in our text. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. We live our lives, or people live their lives as this is not going to happen. As if they're going to live till make it to retirement. I'm only a few years away from it. John's retired. Brother Hal's pretty close. I think Mary retired, right? <laughs> I mean, none of us know that we're going to make it to that point. When the Lord comes, it's going to be as a thief. How many of us know when the thief's going to rob your house? <laughs> well, let's hope you don't, but listen. If he robs it, if somebody's coming to rob your house, do you know when he's coming? That's when the Lord's coming. You're not promised tomorrow, but you are promised an everlasting life if tomorrow comes and you have already put your faith and trust in him. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour the Lord cometh. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in the watch, the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour that ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Guess what? That's when he's going to come. All this debating, all this bickering, all this fighting of who's right and who's wrong. God is right. Man is wrong. God promised eternal life. Man can't give you that. Man can't promise that. There are people getting married and making promises in marriage that will last, supposed to last for their entire life. And the marriage just lasts, there's been marriages last six months. I promise to love you forever and ever. There's been marriages last 20 years. I promise to love you forever and ever. God promised, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Although you may slap me, spit in my face, although you may not follow me and do what I want, I will still love you. Isaiah 51, 6. Lift up your eyes to heaven. And look upon the earth beneath, for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. How many of us have beautiful homes? Or how many people in the world, I won't say us, everybody has a beautiful home. Picture somebody has a beautiful home home and it burns and catches fire their hearts can be broken how many of us have a million dollar car it crashes and burns to the ground and your heart broken guess what when the lord returns and the earth melts with a fervent heat all that's going to be gone the only thing left will be is your soul if it has put its faith and trust 
in Jesus Christ. Verse 11 of our text, 2 Peter chapter 3. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in holy conversation and godliness? How should you be? If you know that this world is going to melt, be gone, there's nothing worth anything in the world. If you know that, what manner of person ought you to be now in your conversation, your daily life? In Acts chapter 2 and verse 37, the sermon here was preached. Conviction happened. In verse 37, it says, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. I don't know about you, but every time I hear the word preached, I'm pricked in my heart. These people were pricked in their heart. They were convicted and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said unto them, repent, put your faith and trust in the promises of God. I will never leave you nor forsake you. God gives eternal life. God promises eternal life to those that put their faith and trust in him. He said, repent and be baptized. That means that pictures that you have, not the baptism doesn't save you, but it pictures that you have put your faith and trust in Jesus. Be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For the promise is unto you and to your children. How many of us want our children to know the truth? Are we teaching it to them? The promise is unto you and to your children. If you get saved... I say, okay, I'm saved, I'm good, let me go live my life. What good are you to anyone else who needs salvation? You're not a witness. You didn't give your life a ransom. You didn't buffet your body daily. You didn't present your body as a, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. You thought about you and nobody else. We need to live our lives as Christ did. And we need to love this world and we need to put our faith and trust in God and put ourselves out of the way and, put, and bear our cross daily and we need to follow Jesus daily. Verse 39 of Acts chapter 2, For the promises unto you and your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And our Lord God shall call all if all will accept Him. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, which means the doctrines that Jesus Christ taught them, that the apostles carried out, they taught them and they continued in this doctrine and in the fellowship, which means they had all things together common. They were in one accord and in breaking of bread from house to house, the fellowship, it was sweet. And fear came upon every soul. I think today Christians don't live to be Christians because they don't have fear. Christians don't become involved in the church because they don't have fear. And I'm talking about a respect for their Savior. So, verse 11, all these things are begun. What man or person ought you to be in holy conversation and godliness? Verse 12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord. How many of us are looking forward to that day? Anybody say amen? How many of us are looking forward to that day? Amen. Those that have put their faith and trust. Those that stand on the promises of God.
in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, because of Abraham's belief, which is what this means, by faith, Abraham believed God by faith when Abraham was called to go out to a place which he should afterward receive for inheritance. He obeyed and he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations whose builder and maker is God. If God didn't build it, it's going to perish. If God is not the maker of it, it's going to perish. It's going to melt with the fervent heat. It's going to be gone. But if God built it, there's a promise on it that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be your God and you will be my people. John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe in me also. There's a lot of people say, I believe in God. This just didn't happen. Well, you're not there yet. You must believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the Savior of me and of you, of the entire world. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. You know, I believe God's promises. You know what? When I see that, and it's the Word of God, I see mansions in my memory bank, and my, in my vision, I see mansions in heaven, unlike anything I've ever seen in this world. I try to vision how great they're going to look. I can only do that by looking at some of the homes in this world, but then I look at some of the homes in this world, these big mansions, and I'm like, these things have to be maintained. The mansions that God has built will not have to be maintained. They're big, they're beautiful, they're gorgeous. Here he says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, he said, I would have told you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. There is a place prepared for everyone who put their faith and trust in God who makes the promise that will never leave us and he will never forsake us. Verse 3, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Guess what? Jesus is coming again. And I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So what manner of person should you be? Knowing that it's going to melt with the fervent heat. Last part of our verse here in 12 says, Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with the fervent heat. All the things that you loved in this world, gone. Second Peter 13, uh, 3, verse 13 and 14. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. You know why? <laughs> this one's no good. This one's got thorns. We have to have lawn services come out to get rid of the weeds because they just keep coming. This place gets hot. This place gets super cold. This place becomes unlivable unless you can manage your, 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 where you stay. But the one that Jesus has prepared, you're not going to have to manage it. God's got it all taken care of. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be new. It's not going to have thorns and thistles. It's not going to be burning hot. It's not going to be freezing cold. Verse 13, His promise Look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Is this world today full of righteousness? Are you being lied to all the time? Can you believe? It's getting to the point you just can't believe anybody anymore. Even those that are in the White House, leaders of, the, of this country, they're not telling you complete truths. They're telling you partial things to make you believe something that's really not true and they're teaching people to do the same thing in our laws you know in our in our gun laws people who are carrying guns that legally there's more laws on them than there is on the criminal right. and they're teaching the people with the guns that you know you have to lie a little bit in order to not get yourself in trouble when when you use your gun 
to protect yourself. What's wrong with it? That, that way of thinking, it's messed up. It's teaching our, 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 this world that you need to lie to get by. No, you don't. Second Peter 3, 13 and 14. Then we'll call it quits for the evening. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for new heavens and new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace. You know what that means? Don't lie. Live honest, live peaceable with all men. If it gets you into trouble by speaking the truth, then by all means get in trouble. Just speak the truth. Be truthful. Don't lie. You know why? Because nobody can remove you from the protection that God has over you. Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. I want us to stand and have a verse of invitation. And I want to think about I want you to think about this. Are you standing on the promises of God? Let's all stand. Are you standing on the promises of God? Are you still living as if God is not really right? God is not really powerful. God is not really as mighty as He says He is. God is not really going to do what He says He's going to do. This world is going to last forever. Somebody's going to find the fountain of youth one day and we're all going to live forever. <laughs> do you really believe that? Or do you believe what God said? I believe I'm going to stand on the promises of God. This earth is going to melt with a fervent heat. But my soul will live forever in heaven because of his promises that he made to me and to you, to all who put their faith and trust in him. Are you ready to put your faith and trust in him? In all aspects of life and not just for salvation? What is our hymn? 563, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full at his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Brother, how would you close this prayer? Father in heaven, as we come to the close of this study this afternoon, we thank you again for your word. And Lord, at your great love and Lord, at your great care that, uh, that you have for each of us, that you want all men to be saved. And Lord, I just pray that that if we haven't trusted in your Son as Savior, that again, this would be the day of salvation before we lay down to sleep tonight, that we would turn to you in, in repentance and in faith and receive your gift of salvation. Pray that you guide and direct us through this new week, Lord. May it be a week that we look forward to opportunities uh, to be the witness, to be that lighthouse you would have us to be. Pray that you bring us back to the next appointed time. Continue to be with each of our prayer requests that we've heard today. For it's the name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen.